Hello beautiful people, how are we doing? So today's video, I wanted to film a reading vlog. Is she a book talk, booktuber girly? Yes she is, oh my gosh. Thank you, thank you. I wanted to film a cheeky little video about the book that I'm currently reading. Um, now I have started it, sorry to um, disappoint. I don't know yet if this video is going to have spoilers in it. This is the book I'm reading. It is Credence by Penelope Douglas. I have read a Penelope Douglas book before. I read Punk 57. Punk 57? Is that what it's called? It was a while ago. Punk 47. Punk insert whatever number it is um this book i read that book before and i loved it i thought it was a great novel i loved her style of writing and this book is very different <laughs> as i said i've started it so i do i do know that it's fecked in the head sorry i just got a message from my university i think saying congratulations you've been invited to graduation at the university Please check your email for details and respond. Does that mean I have, does that mean I passed? Slay, I'm gonna check to make sure that's not a scam, but like, that's fun. Oh my God, guys, I'm graduating. Anyway, not that like I should have expected that I was gonna graduate, but fun. Um, back to business. This book is fecked in the brain. It is also, is her name pronounced Tiran? Guys, help me out. Help a girlie out. I'm dyslexic. Half the time I read, especially fantasy books, when I don't know a word, my dyslexic brain just doesn't even attempt it and I just like mumble my way through. Anyway, I think her name is Tiran. You are in the POV of Tiran, the main character, the protagonist. And normally when I'm in the brain, of when I'm in the POV of the main character, typically I like her and I think, okay, those decisions are valid. But in this book, babes, what are you doing? I do like the character. I think that she's fun and fresh. I like how she's written, but um, some of her decisions and like the way that she thinks, I'm reading it and I'm like, oh my God, bestie, why? Why are you thinking this way? Um, but I'm really excited to see where it goes. It's gotten me hooked. It's just so twisted. But it's my first, like, taboo... Uh, would you call this a dark romance? Probably not. I don't really know. It's definitely taboo, though. That's an understatement. Um, but I'm loving it. I'm eating it up. Because, like, my favourite fan fictions growing up were the ones where it's, like, your mum is getting you dressed up with all your finest clothes and you are getting sold to One Direction. Enjoy your new life. Like, Harry Styles has locked you up in a basement and then you're going to have Stockholm Syndrome and you're going to fall in love with him. And that is how I used to fill my 14-year-old brain in my pivotal formative years was um, romanticizing being sold to One Direction. So if that says anything about my taste in books... There you go. But so far, it's crazy. So come along with me to continue reading this and I will continue to share my thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like the book content, let me know and I'll make more because I love talking about books. And then we can form our own little book club. Oh my God, it'll be so cute. Stop it. Okay, I'm going to go. I have a train to catch in like two seconds, so... Okay, so I'm back home now, as you can see, and I have worked my way through Credence. I'm on to chapter 24, and 
so far I need to read the Bible after this and have a word with Jesus and then call the police and also check myself into an institution. So that's where I'm at. Why? Why are you doing these things, babe? Why? What's going on? This book feels like an absolute crime to read in public. I was sitting on the train thinking I should be locked up for this. I deserve the electric chair for sitting and reading this book in public. And I have a pretty high tolerance, I feel like, for taboo things, but I've decided that this video will be containing spoilers because genuinely, I just need to unpack. I need to debrief with you all about this. I don't know if I even said this in the first clips. So it's about this chick named Tier Tiernan. Tiernan. We, we established this before. It's about this girl whose parents die and um, her random uncle that she doesn't really know of calls her up and is like, hey babe, your parents in their will have left you in my custody. So feel free to come on down to my house in the middle of nowhere with my two sons, Caleb and Noah. And also just a warning that up in this cabin, in the middle of nowhere, it snows for like six months at a time. So if she does decide to go there in the winter, she'll be snowed in and she won't be able to leave. That's that's a cool storyline, right? Um, however, she truly does have the personality of like a wet piece of bread. There's been a few little pockets of like, okay, cool. But other than that, I really don't think she has a personality with peace and love. Sorry, girly. And then the boys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just cut it out. All right. Shut it down. So her uncle's name is Jake. And when he picks her up from the airport, she's kind of like, you're kind of sexy. What the hell? Bestie, he's your uncle. What are you doing? So instantly she's kind of like, you're hot, babe. Love it. Jake kind of feels it too, but he's like, oh, I shouldn't because I'm her uncle. Yeah. At the moment, Caleb is mute. I don't know if he stops being mute or if he's just mute the whole time, but Caleb doesn't speak. He's had some trauma. We don't know what it is so far. I don't know if it gets told what happens, but I'm up to chapter 24 and we still don't know what's what's been going on, what's happened in Caleb's life. But Caleb is like sexual assault central. He is mayor of sexual assault town. Like I'm sure that there's people out there that really romanticize him and really, I don't know, think he's cute. But no, when he's introduced, he's got like a dead deer over his shoulders and he basically like attacks her. She's saying, no, stop. And he won't stop until Noah, the boy, the boyfriend, Noah, her other cousin, comes in and stops him. Like, mm, no, no, babe. Anyway, but I must say, actually, there have been a few little... So I actually tell a lie because I just said people romanticize him. Ew. But there have been a few scenes where I get a little bit, like, butterfly-y. I'll, I'll leave. I'll give myself the electric chair, actually, for feeling that way. There have been a few little moments that I'm like, okay. I get you a little bit, but still, 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 I hate myself as I'm reading it. And Noah is fine. Noah's nice. He's like, he's the other cousin. Um, no sexual assault here. Actually, no, there have been a few times where she said no. And like, maybe the tone of the no is a bit different. It's kind of like, no, but please. But still, if she's saying no, how about we stop, drop and roll, all right? We stop, drop, and roll out of there. So where I'm up to in the book so far, if you're wondering, um, she slept with all of them. Babes has done everything with all of her cousins and uncles. Girlie, keep it in your pants. And all the boys, keep it in your pants. Everyone, let's just not... It's just such... It's just so... <laughs> I can't even talk. Yeah, no, she is loving it. She's loving it. She's eating it up. One of the last lines that I read um, so far 
is LA and my life there once upon a time is miles away. This is my home. So, okay, bestie, go off, I guess. I did write down, because I was reading this, like, on a train, which, again, should be illegal to be able to read this book in fucking public, but I did write down a few numbers of pages that I wanted to discuss. Oh. <laughs> you know how I mentioned before that I got butterflies from Caleb? I got butterflies in page 235. Oh, yeah. Caleb laughed at her joke and that's what gave me butterflies. I'm sorry, are my standards also on the floor? Or like, actually, are my standards in hell? If that's what, if that's what gave me butterflies, I'm ashamed. I am ashamed. And then the other thing <laughs> is to, yeah, yeah. I wrote down, not the family movie night. The people that have read this will understand what I'm talking about, but like, my jaw was on the floor in a public train. Take me to jail. Take me to jail. I still have a few chapters to go, so I'm going to try and get it done today. I think I can. It's not, it's not a whole heap. As I said before, I genuinely do have dyslexia. It's not something that I was saying as a joke. So it takes me so long to get through books because it, I'm slow at reading. So when I said earlier, like, I'll do reading vlogs. It's so fun. Like, you guys are going to be waiting months for me to finish a book, which is kind of annoying. But maybe not months, actually. I'm being too harsh on myself. I can finish a book in, like, a couple days. But some people read, like, multiple books in a day, and I respect it, and I take my hat off to them, and I think it's really cool if you can get through book multiple books in a day. But that would just not be me, I don't think. I don't think that'll ever be me. Anyway... Not the sob story about dyslexia. Jeez, sorry. At the moment, she hasn't picked just one. And I feel like she's going to pick just one by the end of it. And I have a feeling she's going to pick Caleb. That's just, that's just the vibes that I'm getting. He was painted in this light of being awful. And you kind of don't really like him. But then there's little pockets where you're like, oh, cute. I don't know. I just have a feeling that it's going to be, it's going to be Caleb, which can I also just say when I'm reading this, I picture basically Stefan and Damon Salvatore. That's who these boys are in my brain, in my head and in my heart. This is Stefan and Damon. That's who she's falling in love with. So like Stefan is Noah and Damon is Caleb. So like in my head, I find Caleb more attractive because I'm a Damon girl. But also, I know in my heart that Stefan, that Stefan, that Noah is like the nicer one and the one she probably should pick out of her fucking cousins. That's how, that's how I've been reading it and how I've been picturing it. And then Jake, the uncle, is like Sam Claflin or someone. I don't even know. He doesn't really have a face in my brain, but I, but I am enjoying the book and I don't know how. I don't know how I'm enjoying it, but hating it also needing therapy after this and also not liking any of the characters, but, but actually enjoying the book. If you can make a sense of any of that, let me know because for me, I can't, I'm going to keep reading and I'll get back to you when something happens or I finish it. We'll see. see me properly right now but I forgot to mention that there was like a pretty oh my god a bird just hit my window hello I forgot to mention before there was a pretty jarring scene of the barn at their house catching fire and Tiernan like got really badly injured and Caleb had to stitch her back up and I must say this was the first book out of every book I've ever read that genuinely made me feel a bit queasy reading it. And I don't know why. It wasn't like it was super graphic and she had like a bone sticking out of her or something. But just something about it really made me feel a bit sick to my stomach. And then two seconds later she gets stitched up and then they start having communal sex. Like they all start sleeping with each other. The, the whiplash that I felt, I was 
stunned, too stunned to speak because I'm reading something going, ooh, and then so quickly it turned into, ooh, what? What are we doing? What are we doing? Someone send the police. I don't think I'm ever going to be the same. I don't think I'm ever going to be the girl that I once was after reading that. Thanks, Penelope. Appreciate you. <laughs> okay, I wanted to really quickly check in because I'm currently discovering some Caleb lore. I'm currently finding out what actually happened to him when he was a child and why he went mute. I honestly didn't really know what I was expecting to happen. I guess we'll find out. Pretty exciting stuff. It's pretty far through in the book though. Like, like this is all I've got left and we're only just finding out what happened to him. I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued. Okay, so some time has passed. I've made some dumplings and I am over this book. I'm sick of it. Like, I'll finish it, but I really am, like, not... I'm not enjoying myself anymore. It kind of feels like there's not much of a plot anymore. Um, I found out what happened to Caleb when he was a youngling. It was very sad. I can understand why he's mute. You know, it makes sense. His voice is the only thing that he can control. All that jazz. I don't know what Tyrion wants. Tiernan? I still don't know her fucking name, okay? Anyway, he's just destroyed a piece of furniture and she's flipping out about it and I just don't care. She like, you know, wants him but then she's like, don't kiss me, but do everything else, but like, don't kiss me though. Like, stop. So, I just want to finish the book. I just want to get it done so that I don't have to read it anymore. <laughs> With peace and love. And this is by no means me shitting on like, Penelope Douglas. I'm not shitting on the artist, slightly shitting on the art though. So sorry, so sorry babe, so sorry. Isn't that like how, why people read books is to escape reality? Well this reality that I'm escaping into I don't enjoy. I don't want to be there, I don't want to be in her head. I swear I'm not a Debbie Downer guys, I think I'm just hangry. So I'm going to eat my dumps, my cheeky little dumps <laughs> and I'm gonna continue reading and I'm gonna get this damn book finished by today. One thing that really frustrates me about this book is that the boys keep defending Caleb's actions with like, oh, but he's sad and he has trauma and he's in love with you. So he just doesn't know how to communicate his feelings. No, it's yes, having trauma, that is like an explanation for, for why he is the way that he is. But it's not an excuse to be a horrible person. Like, it's not an excuse to physically, because he's hit her, sexually and mentally abuse someone. Like, what do you mean, sir? Yeah, it's just something that I noticed that keeps happening throughout the book. That these really poor awful actions keep getting defended and it's really frustrating me anyway till next time i'll keep reading and i'll check in when i have something else to rant about okay so i've just gotten up to the bit where she's reading through all of the books now this i'm kind of vibing with not gonna lie i kind of love that he's not reading his like at home library, but he's writing in all the books. I kind of love that they're all just like bits and bobs of paragraphs, all discombobulated and don't really make sense all together, but you're getting so much of his personality. Again, I'm not a fan of any of these characters still. However, I do really quite like this storyline that we're going down. And not gonna lie, I had a little giggle when he wrote in one of the books, found candy in the trash and kale on my pizza. She's fecking weird. I think that that's funny. Um, I know I had a little giggle, not gonna lie. But yes, I, I vibe with this. So I know that I've been ranting and you're probably thinking I'm like just such a negative Nancy, but no, I can appreciate when something is like, Cool. And I think that this is a bit of a slay. I did think that maybe he was going to keep a diary or something because obviously he doesn't talk and somehow we were going to have to find what goes on in his brain. But I didn't think that like going through all of the bookshelf. Does that make sense? I don't know. I just like the vibe. Positive news. I'm actually enjoying what I'm reading at the moment.
So, gold star. Gold star for page 392 vibes. All right, everyone, the time has come and I finished Credence. We did it, ladies and gents, we did it. I don't even know what I'm feeling. I don't know how to put my thoughts into words. This book truly left me speechless and not in a good way. I don't know what I want to rate it out of five. I'm thinking maybe a two and a half, three stars. I think it's an interesting concept. I, I liked, liked is actually a strong word. Maybe I didn't like the concept <laughs> because it was disturbing. I have never read anything remotely like this. She is an individual, she is independent, she is unique. And so for that, I will give it an extra star. I don't know, I don't, I really don't know guys. I, this is such an anticlimactic end to this video because I actually like, I'm so disturbed that I think I need to go to therapy. She did end up with Caleb, so we predicted correctly. She ends up with Caleb, she has his child. She does, she does. She has a child with her cousin. It's giving Sweet Home Alabama. Actually, one thing though that I will add is that I audibly gasped. I gasped out loud when Caleb spoke for the first time. Overall, it definitely was not my favorite book, but I would recommend people to read it because I think it's such an experience. It's so bizarre and so gross. Sorry, I'm someone that can speak to a brick wall. And the fact that I'm left speechless says something. It's just another thing ticked off my TBR. Um, so now I can say I've read it. I can add it to my Goodreads. Super exciting. I don't know what I'm going to read next. I'm thinking Haunting Adeline. But yes, thank you so much for joining me on this Credence journey. It truly was a journey. And I hope that you enjoyed the book content. If you would like more, let me know. If you don't want more, that's valid too. You know what? Your opinions are so valid and I, I respect you for it. But yes, I hope you have a fabulous day and don't make out with your cousins and your uncle. That's the takeaway. Do not keep it in the family, guys. Come on. There's a whole world of people out there. You really don't have to resort to your family. Okay? All right. Bye, I guess. <laughs>